Welcome to the DL Boxing Podcast. I am your host, Coach D, along with co-host Bad Chaz and neighborhood hero Ryan Rios, where we talk about the sport you and I love, boxing. Welcome, everybody. This is episode 36. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Neighborhood hero Ryan Rios, let them know what we have on tap for them, man. Oh, we got the fight recap, man, and we have a ton of fights to talk about. Right. Good I, fights, too. Yeah, very good fights. Bad Chaz, what else do we have on tap for them? Oh, you know what? We're going to talk about the upcoming fights, man, and you fans are just going to want to tune in to hear about it. All right, man. So let's get this episode on underway. All right, guys, it's fight recap time. All right, guys, let's start with the DAZN main event out of Ireland. And we had Chantel Cameron score an impressive unanimous decision over 10 rounds over the previously unbeaten Katie Taylor. This was for the undisputed 140-pound titles. Man, neighborhood hero Ryan Reels, uh, Katie finally, uh, Katie Taylor found her match, right? Yeah. Chantel Cameron mm-hmm. took it to her and uh, let us know how that went, man. Yeah, like you said, uh, Cameron, man, looked impressive, dude. And she just put on a, a just a great display of boxing, dude. And just she was able to just to maul Taylor. What yeah. I, you know, I, I thought she just went in there and just cut off the ring well. Yeah. And Taylor didn't really have too many answers for her, man. It seemed like mm-hmm. Taylor was backing up. And then, uh, you know, when Taylor would, you know, get off and counter, she would just stop. And it just seemed like, man, she got gassed in the early rounds and and she tried to come back. But just camera was just too much for her, dude, and just looked excellent, man. And uh, I, I thought that was a good fight. I wish Taylor could have put on a little bit better performance, but she was just outgunned, man. Right. That Chaz being in uh, Katie Taylor's backyard, I, I'm I'm actually glad the judges got it right. Yeah. Uh, Chantel Cameron uh, just had the fundamentals, right, oh, over yeah. Katie Taylor. How did you see that fight? Oh, man, she just looked durable. She looked strong. She yeah. looked powerful. She looked like she had a lot of heart, you know, throughout the entire fight. And she just kind of seemed like she wasn't going anywhere. You couldn't push her backwards. Mm, right. She kept t- Taylor on that back foot. And, you know, what ultimately I think kind of uh, helped her in that fight. You know what I mean? She kind of, you know, was able to use a good one, two and kind of put that left hook in there to the body and back upstairs and kind of just uh, showed Taylor that, hey, you know what I mean? I'm tougher than you and uh, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. used her advantages yeah. to, to, you know, to the fullest. Yeah. So congratulations to Chantal Cameron mm-hmm. on your victory. All right, guys, let's talk about the ESPN card out of Las Vegas. And let's start with El General Emiliano Vargas. Boy, he's still on the winning streak, uh, scored a stunning body shot KO. Bad Chaz, how'd you see that performance? Man? You know what? I was watching that fight. I'm always looking forward to watching the Vargas' fight. You know, they're entertaining and just uh, just a good little uh, stable of fighters right there. So uh, Emiliano, you know, he started off in like an orthodox position and uh, it looked like, you know, he was kind of taking some punches, you know, um, upstairs and stuff. And it kind of went to went to his corner and it looked like he kind of came back and made an adjustment like a veteran move. Went to orthodox position, kind of landed some clean uh, body shots to the body of his opponent, kind of putting it right there in the solar plex with his left hook. And man, yeah. he, he was able to just uh, basically put his opponent down on the canvas with that shot. Yeah, beautiful body shot. Neighborhood hero Ryan Rios. Uh, I was telling you guys earlier, like I turned on the prelims. I'm like, all right, Nico Ali Walsh is on. I'm like, I, I think Emiliano's going to be on afterwards. And then I was disappointed that they're like, oh, earlier in the broadcast, Emiliano scores an impressive body. I was like, what in the world? Yeah. Like, I'm thinking from now on, they need to put Emiliano on exactly, the, you know, man. on there instead of Nico Ali. Yeah. What do you think, man? No, I agree, <laughs> man, dude. Like, he's just beyond his years, dude. Yeah. And uh, I just keep getting impressed over and over, man. Like, uh, he can end that fight any way possible, dude. Doesn't matter if it's to the body, to the head, just, you know, a barrage of punches, man. He's just that special, dude. And yeah. I can't wait to see him again, dude. And, man, he might feature, like, on a co-main pretty soon. Yeah. He should, man. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, uh, that's one of the, the main yeah. attractions, right, that yes, ESPN has man. going for them. Yeah, so congratulations, Emiliano mm-hmm. Vargas, on your victory. All right, guys. Another great fight on that card. We had Raymond Murataya score an impressive second round TKO over Jeremia Nakatila. Neighborhood hero Ryan Rios, uh, you're a big fan of Murataya. Yeah, uh, let let fan, them know how, how that fight went, man. Oh, man, just a, like I, like you said, I'm a big fan of Raymond, dude. I've been following him for a while. And uh, and when I, I heard this fight was announced, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be a test, oh, you yeah. know? But man, I was dead wrong, dude. <laughs> he passed it. And uh, <laughs> Raymond definitely passed that test, dude. Yeah. Looks big. Spectacular, dude. I remember when, uh, you know, his opponent fought Perchelt 
and just man he took it to Perchel, dude and I, I he met him quit on the stool i believe i believe so yeah and dude for raymond to do that dude is just man dude just skyrocketed up a couple notches dude and uh i feel like man he's ready to take on the top guys dude uh, a world title is in his in his in, is in his sights yeah. and i can't wait to see what he does next because man that's that's one of my guys right, right. there dude yeah well said neighborhood hero and reels congratulations raymond murataya on your tko victory all right guys moving along on that espn card we had junto nakatani score a knockout of the year in the 12th round over andrew maloney he becomes the wbo junior bantamweight champion Neighborhood hero. I'm sorry, uh, Bad Chaz. What a knockout! What a beating from round one all the way to the twelfth round. And uh, yeah, Nakatani gets it done in emphatic fashion. Uh, how'd you see that fight? Oh, man? you know what? Going back and watching that fight, I think you know Maloney. You know, you kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. And you want to see him do good. You know what I mean? But Nakatani, man, he's just uh, he was just in a different mode. You know, like yeah. uh, and Maloney. You know, he was trying his best. You know, to kind of get in there and bang with him and stuff. But you know, Nakatani, he was setting traps, man. Oh yeah, he, was. he had his eyes Beautiful wide traps. open, and and you seen him. He knocked him down several times, mm-hmm. and then you just watch him like lock in and set up that beautiful uh overhand left you know he's a southpaw yeah. and uh, i mean you watch his eyes the entire mm-hmm. time and, and he was just kind of doing like a, a like a like kind of like a lazy jab just, just kind of set up this overhand left came down and you watch his eyes the entire time to kind of roll into it and boom like force yeah. met yeah. force and man it was one of those knockouts where you're just like man like i love the sport you know what i mean but i like to see guys get up and walk yeah. out of there you know what i mean and yeah. and um you know i just hope that uh maloney can kind of come back 100 percent. you know what i mean and um you know what i mean get a get revenge somehow and and Get back to the sport. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We hope uh, Maloney is all right. Uh, like Bad Chaz described, neighborhood here on Reels, that was just an emphatic yeah, knockout. That sounded like a gunshot, you know, boom, just, uh, you know, he's flat out. Um, where does Junto Nakatani go from here, man? He has such fighters as maybe Bam Rodriguez, mm-hmm. uh, some of those uh, elite fighters. What do you yeah, think, man? Yeah, man, he's, he can have anybody in that division, man. He, he looked great, dude. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I remember Brother Tom mentioning yeah, his right. name, dude, and just said that, dude, this dude's a the real deal. Keep your eye on him. You know what I mean? But again, uh, Nakatani, dude, it's just all up to him, and uh, we'll see what he does next. But yeah, dude, he's uh, he he looked like a newbie to me in that fight, yeah, dude. Right. And uh, so we'll see, dude. He's dangerous for sure, man. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Congratulations, Junto Nakatani, on your KO of the Year victory. All right, guys. Also in that card, we had former champion Oscar Valdez. He scored a 10-round unanimous decision over Adam Lopez. Neighborhood hero Ryan Reels, this was a rematch. Yeah. Uh, how'd you see this rematch play out, man? You know what, dude? I, I thought Oscar Valdez looked good. I, I thought he looked better this fight than he did against that last fight when he fought uh, Blue Nose. Mm-hmm. And that's when Blue Nose knocked him down. Right, right. But um, you know what? Again, Lopez kind of tried to do what Shakur did. It was just right. like pop shot him, get out I of the way. Saw, yep. But uh, Valdez was just loading up on that power, dude, just cutting off the ring. And just Lopez had nowhere to go. And it just seemed like uh, Oscar Valdez got that easy victory for me. You know what? I want to see him fight uh, the bigger names, dude. Go for those titles, dude. And just, you know, put on a great just performance and just start knocking people out, man. Yeah, yeah you would hope so. And I just to kind of go off of what you just said, I kind of saw that too. Uh, Lopez kind of using his movement and that, and that mm-hmm. boxing to give... To give uh, Valdez a little trouble, kind of shades of uh, Shakur Stevenson, but uh, but yeah, uh, you know, you know, there's there's levels to this game, and Lopez didn't just have that level, yeah. to, you know, to overcome Valdez's incoming pressure. Uh, Bad Chaz with this victory, Valdez puts his uh, name, uh, in, you know, in the in in the hat to fight such fighters as El Vaquero Navarrete. How is that? How would that fight? Oh play man, out, I'm excited. Yeah. I love Vaquero. You know what I mean? We yeah. got to me and our neighborhood hero got to go watch him in Arizona, yeah. and, and I mean, he can be down on a fight, man, and and then there he is, you know, coming out with some. Uh, some kind of weird punch, you know what I mean? Where he's over here yeah. and, and you get hit with a, with the hook from out of nowhere. And, um, yeah. I'm really excited that he called out that, uh, Vaquero and I really mm-hmm. uh, excited to watch that fight. You know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, same here, man. I think that it's, uh, it's great. You know, I think that, uh, Valdez, you know what I mean? He has some great power shots and stuff and, um, just, uh, don't let him plant his feet, man. Just kind of stay out of the way of him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well said, uh, bad Chaz, congratulations, Oscar Valdez on your victory. All right, guys. Well, we come to the main event of that card, and it was Devin the Dream Haney scoring a unanimous decision over 12 rounds over Vasily Lomachenko. Uh, controversy to say the least a little bit. Um, neighborhood hero Ryan Rios, uh, what was your take on that mega fight, man? You know what? I, lo- I love both fighters, dude. And it's one of those fights where, like, I didn't have any bias involved. You know, I was just a fan, dude. I love Devin Haney. You know, he's from California. He's from the Bay, dude. Just everything that he does, I love. 
Vasily Lomachenko, just a legend, dude. Just a yeah. legend in the game, man. Just a future Hall of Famer. And uh, I was just really looking forward to this fight. And you know what? It, it lived to that hype. You know what I mean? And Devin Haney just put on his, his skills, dude. In yeah, the very right. beginning, I the felt like he... Yeah. Lomachenko was always a slow starter, but I felt like he tried to start fast. And uh, Haney just annulled everything he was trying to do just by that that speed, that that just that ring IQ that he has as a young fighter. But um, Vasily Lomachenko, again, like what he does, he just brings it on in the second half of the fight. And I felt like he dominated that second half of the fight, dude. Like, um, it just seemed like Devin Haney was just like at a loss. You know, like when you're at a loss for words, you know, I'm sure that we all are at at one point in our, our lives. You know, yeah. he was just couldn't figure out. Lomachenko was just getting hit with that left over time after time. You know what I mean? I want to say even Devin Haney went to the corner and he even told his dad, like, he figured me out. He knows what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? And uh, I just felt like Loma won that fight, man. I felt like um, Devin Haney tried his best, but Loma was one step above. And um, I was just kind of disappointed because I felt like Loma should have got that decision, dude. And uh, Devin Haney ended up getting unanimous, what, what I don't understand. Yeah. If anything, I could see a draw, right. but um, I would edge my, uh, you know, in favor for, for Loma. So uh, it was kind of disappointing for me, dude. I like, I, again, I love both fighters. It was a hell of a performance from both. Yeah, it was. But I, if, if I were a judge, I would um, give the nod to Loma, man. Yeah, and I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but what, you know, a lot of people saying robbery. Uh, no, yeah, no, no robbery. Because when mm -hmm. you have two elite fighters of that caliber going at it, this is, you know, you get this tight, you know, neck and neck fight, and which we got. Uh, but like you said, I felt, um, I think uh, Lomachenko landed the, you know, the better shots yeah. throughout the fight. Although, like you said, Devin Haney kept them at bay in the, at the beginning mm -hmm. of the fight uh, with, the, you know, with this jab and those body shots, those amazing body yeah. shots that landed cleanly mm -hmm. on, on Lomachenko's body. Um, yeah, uh, but but like you said, late in the fight, Lomachenko came out with the combinations, mm -hmm. and that's what I remember, right? I remember last yeah. what what you know what Lomachenko did, and so after the fight was over, I felt he had done enough to to earn that victory. You know, seven rounds of five, but yeah, I could see a draw if that you know, or you know, seven five for Haney, right? Yeah. Because as we remember, he, uh, the fight is scored round by round, mm -hmm. right? Even if uh, Lomachenko has a spectacular 10th round, well, you know, you, you know, there's yeah. nine rounds before that that had to be scored individually, right? Uh, Bad Chaz, how did you see that fight, man? Oh, you know what, man? I'm just kind of feel the same way about it, man. I felt like Loma won that fight. And the reason why I felt that way is because I felt like he kind of took that fight to Devin Haney. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I mean, and he had a really tight guard. You know, a lot of the punches that Haney threw, you know, uh, Loma was able to block. Um, besides, you know, maybe a couple body shots. I feel like Haney landed some clean body shots on the on the left side of uh, Loma's torso, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I just felt like Loma, you know what I mean? He set up some beautiful punches, man. And, and he was landing four punch uh, combinations on this guy and backing him up and slowing yeah. him down and throwing yeah. him off of his rhythm. And, and he just looked like, you know, definitely the veteran in that fight. You know what? I love Loma. I love Haney. But yeah. um, I think that uh, if it would have came down to it, I think that um, Loma should have won that fight, you know, on a unanimous decision. Um, I think that Haney, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not his fault for, you know, how it played out. Right, exactly. But yeah, um, I right. think that um, I think that Haney definitely learned a, a big lesson from oh, this, yeah. this fight. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. he was one of the top fighters that he's faced today. Um, but, yeah, I love Loma. And I think that he had a very high IQ in the ring, um, setting up some beautiful punches. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, the judges, Neighborhood Hero Ryan Reels, one of the judge had an eight to yeah. four for uh, Haney, which is uh, absurd mm -hmm. in my, you know, yeah, in my opinion, right? That's too wide. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like what put a sour taste in our mouth, I think, because yeah, yeah. unanimous, like you mentioned, man. Uh, I'm okay with, you know, being 7-5 either way or a draw. But, man, that, that you know, 8-4, to four, yeah, that's that's yeah. not right. That's not right. Mm -hmm. So that's where a lot of the controversy comes from, I, I think, you know, where, you know, people saying robbery. Um, but, but, yeah, a lot of the fighters, you know, a lot of the people, uh, yeah. you know, said that Loma won, right? And you know what, dude? Like, a lot of people that I even talk to, because I talk to a lot of people that ask me, like, hey, what would you think of the fight? And, you know what, I'll give them my opinion, and then I'll ask them, oh, man, what would you think? And not one person had told me, like, Haney won. You know what I mean? And and I, I look up stuff and, you know, and I see people just going for Loma, you know, say like, man, that was a, a robbery. But again, like, I don't, I don't think it was a robbery, yeah, no. but it's really rare where I hear like, no, nah, Haney won that fight easily. Haney was, you know, undisputed. And and it's just weird because something's got to give. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like these judges got to be held accountable, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, 
Like, I just hope, you know, Vegas, because Vegas is giving themselves a bad reputation, you know. And, yeah, And man. it's always the same judges, you know what I mean? And uh, something's got to give, you know. Maybe there's a suspension for certain venues or certain casinos yeah. or certain areas or certain judges. Who knows? But, um, yeah, it's just hard. Fighters risk their lives every, you know, every day, whether it's inside the ring or sparring or training. Who knows? But yeah. um, people got to be held accountable, man. Yeah, for right. sure. I agree, man. Well, we know that Devin Haney will come out better for this. You know, it was his experience that, that mm-hmm. he now has under his belt. And uh, I think he's going to need it because, well, they're we're, they're talking about fights with Shakur Stevenson or even Tank yeah. Davis. Um, how do you see those fights? Bad chess? Oh, man, it's it's going to be a very, very, uh, it's going to be a high-speed chess match. Right. That's for, that's for sure. Or it could be very boring, you know, because they're just going to be so defensively uh, against each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, that's definitely a huge fight like uh, Shakur and Devin Haney. Right. I mean, um, how do you guys see it playing out? They're both very high IQ and technical. And I mean, they kind of grew up with each other, fighting each other in the amateurs and stuff. You know, they, they kind of are familiar with each other in the ring and stuff. So, I mean, uh, they know each other's strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, that's an exciting fight yeah. for me. And I think that that's probably one that probably would be made before Tank, right? Because Tank is with uh, uh, PBC. Yeah. Uh, Shakur's with Top Rank, I mm-hmm. believe. So, you know, they're both or they both or Devin Haney fought with top rank. Yeah. I don't know if he has a contract with them or not. I'm not too sure. But mm-hmm. but uh Haney, Shakur, man, I mean, you still can't count out Haney. I mean, a lot of people say, Oh, yeah. Well, Shakur beats everybody, right? 135. Yeah. But you can't count out Haney. Uh, what do you how do you see that fight? You when know it what plays I, out? Honestly, I see that fight happening like at a, yeah, at either one forty or one forty seven. Mm-hmm. I don't think Haney will will fight him at one thirty five for sure. And if it yeah. happens, it's gonna be in a bigger weight and uh you know, when you go up in weight, it's hard to to judge that fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. uh, power goes, you know, stamina goes. It's, it's just a lot of factors. But if that fight were to happen at, at 135, then I, I see Shakur beating yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just going to say, you bring, you bring up a good point because, uh, as we know, Haney kind of, you know, has a hard time shrinking himself down to 135. I remember when the fight started, uh, we were like, is Loma fighting Errol Spence? Because you know, he looks so big in there, right? You know, yeah. and that. So, um, so yeah, you bring up a good point. He probably they'll probably meet up maybe at one forty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be surprised if they do fight at one thirty five next. But hey, money talks, and yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. we'll see what happens. So, congratulations to Devin the Dream Haney on your victory. All right, guys, it's fight week. All right, guys. Well, it's fight week. Let's uh, let everybody know out of the Smoke Sky Bar in San Antonio, we have the return of Daniel Cortez, who is 4-0 with two KOs. He will take on Austin Rivas. Mm-hmm. Of course, we had Daniel Cortez yes, on our on our show. Um, so we want to wish him the very mm-hmm. best. Right, Neighborhood Hero on Real Yeah, that's my guy right there, dude, rooting for Daniel. Man, he's going to look spectacular, dude. And he's going to put on a performance for San Antonio. And uh, I can't wait, man. Yeah. Any words for uh, Daniel Cortez? Oh, man, he's a great kid. You know, I I suggest to all of our fans and viewers, you know, tune in and and find out who Daniel Cortez is, man. He's 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 coming up and he's an entertaining fighter to watch. And he's he's part of a great camp. Well, well said, uh, that Chaz. So uh, good luck, Daniel Cortez. Good luck, Daniel. Fight. All right, guys, let's move on to the ESPN Plus card out of Ireland. And uh, we're going to have Luis Alberto Lopez, El Venado Lopez. He will take on Michael Conlin. Man, this is going to be for the IBF featherweight title. Again, uh, Luis uh, Lopez is 27-2 and two with 15 KOs. Michael Conlin, 18-1 and one with 9 KOs. Bad Chaz, Michael Conlin, as we know, his only loss was to uh, Lee Wood in the last round. And he's, uh, it seems to me like he's still kind of shaking off the effects of that fight yeah. in, in this, you know, in this fight, in this few comeback fights as he had how does he match up against Venado Lopez man who's uh, who's very uh, active and throws a lot of punches in that ring oh uh, you know what that's going to be a tough call you know they're both tough fighters but like you said it's going to depend on you know how he comes back into this fight you know is he is he kind of delicate you know what I mean mm-hmm. is he a little fragile you know from that from that vicious knockout that yeah. he encountered um, Lopez, you know what? He sets up beautiful punches downstairs, upstairs, you know what I mean? And, and he can be patient. So, you know what? Conlon, you know, he has his work cut out for him. And um, I hope that he can come back to the ring and, you know what I mean, be that that fighter that he was before he took that knockout. Yeah, well said, Bet Chaz. Neighborhood Hero Ryan Real is uh, Conlon would probably be best to, you know, box yeah. all 12 rounds, right? Mm-hmm. Stay away from uh, Venado's uh, yeah. power. Uh, you're big on Venado. I know yeah, you, I you gave him, a, was it, was it the, 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 was it Prospect of the Year? or what was Yes, it? I did. Yeah. Um, well, he's a champion big. now. Right. Yeah, big on him, man. And uh, I remember when he fought uh, 
Gabe Flores, man. Gabe Flores yeah. was one of my my guys too, and uh, he he put a beating on him, dude. Yeah. And I was just super impressed. I'm like, man, this guy's the real deal because yeah. Gabe's a badass, dude. Mm -hmm. And Venado, dude, he just doesn't stop, dude. He's a machine, dude. He just throws punches and punches. He just overwhelms you. He doesn't quit, dude. He's tough as nails. And uh, it's going to be a tough task for Colin. Colin's slick, dude. Colin's tough. And he's a game opponent. But I just think that just output that Venado puts out, dude, is just going to be too much, dude. And uh, it's going to be a great fight, but Venado's going to get the victory, man. Yeah, well said. I agree. So don't miss Luis El Venado Lopez versus Michael Conlin. Also, we have the fight between Mauricio Lara versus Lee Wood, the rematch, guys. Man, uh, Mauricio Lara is defending his WBA featherweight title that he won from um, Lee Wood. Mauricio Lara, 26-2 with one draw, 19 big wins by way of knockout. Lee Wood, 26-3 with 16 KOs. Neighbor Hio Ryan Rios, that first fight was, a, was like a modern classic. It was yeah. exciting while it yeah, lasted, it man. Was. Is this one going to be any different? You know what, dude? I'm hoping it's not. I hope uh, right. Lara goes in there and he bangs, dude. And that boy could chop wood. Oh, man. He made, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> he, he made me a believer, bro. He yeah. goes after yeah. it, dude. And uh, But Wood's good. He's smart, man. He's a veteran, dude. So he might go in there and play it smart and just kind of keep Lara away. Make the away. adjustments, right? Make That's the adjustments, like you said. And just, you know, stay away from that strong hand, dude. And just, you know what I mean? Just outbox him. But yeah. I'm putting my money on Lara, dude. I, I like Lara. I like what he does. I like what he was about, dude. He's just a cool dude, and uh, hopefully he gets that that KO, man. Yeah, I, I, like I go back and forth as who I want to pick. Like I could say, like, yeah, Lee Wood has the ability to make the adjustments, which he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I just think Lara's just a, like he's another machine with yes. you know power in both hands, and I think I think he'll catch Wood maybe a little bit later on, ninth, tenth round. So I'm picking. Uh, uh, Lara to win this one again by knockout. Bet Chaz, how do you see this outcome, man? Oh, man, Lara just has that pressure, man, that Mexican yeah. style, you know, where he keeps his hands up and he, and he throws his hands, but he, he brings them right back and he just sets up some beautiful knockout punches. I think that, you know, Wood's going to definitely have to come in and play it smart and be patient and just mm -hmm. don't, don't make it too technical with this guy and don't make it too on the inside with this guy. You know what I mean? Take everything back to the center of the ring and just uh, try to box him beautifully, you know what I mean? And just kind of set up, you know, uh, a nice power shot, you know, but don't don't like go in there digging for it. Let it come to you. And, um, you know, hopefully he can at least make it to the 12th round and get a unanimous. But I just think it's going to be hard with Laura just pushing yeah, forward yeah. and just coming at you with those with those uh, with those body shots and just with his hands up, man. You know how hard it is. Man, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. Well said, Bat Chaz. And I think I read a, a, a article that Laura said, oh, I'm going to I'm going to try to knock out Wood even faster. Uh, so, yeah. you know, he's coming. Yeah. So yeah, I, I can't so. wait for that fight, man. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably be texting again. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. Gonna, yeah no, but so. huge respect to Laura for just taking a second fight with him. Oh, yeah, Wood. Like, yeah, I was, wood just, and, yeah, yeah, I was just thinking that. I was right? like, you know Sportsmanship. What? Yeah. Heck, Give him a yeah. shot back. You're right, dude. Yeah, that's that. Yeah. That shows a lot. And he's right going there. over there to do it, right? Dude, like right. that's that's just sportsmanship on sportsmanship, mm -hmm. man. And yeah. you don't get you a lot gave of me people. that shot. I'm gonna give you one yeah. back. Yeah. Like, you know hey, come mean? on, give Loma another fight. Man. <laughs> <laughs> you don't uh, want to hold my uh, breath on that one. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> do it in Ukraine this time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right with all Ukraine uh, yeah. judges yeah, man. <laughs> in their in their in their out in their uh, in their military uh, suits. Huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> we'll see what kind of decision we get there. Right. Mm -hmm. But don't miss Mauricio Lara versus Lee Wood the rematch. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Don't miss it, guys. All right, guys, now the final card from the zone. We have the return of John Scrappy Ramirez. He is 11 and 0 with eight knockouts. He will take on Fernando Diaz, who is 12, 3 and 1 with four KOs. Neighborhood Hero Ryan Rios, we had uh, Scrappy Ramirez on our show. Uh, cool cat, right? Yeah, he's he's trying cool to make cat. a name for himself. So mm -hmm. it's good that we see him back in the ring, right? Yeah. Because that's where we want to see him prove uh -huh. himself, right? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, just very flamboyant, man. Just uh, very charismatic, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, dude, uh, you went to his last fight, dude, oh, and, right. and I thought he looked impressive. He didn't get the the knockout, dude, but, man, I felt like he wanted that fight to go on because he just missed the ring so yeah. much, dude. Yeah. But this fight, I want him to see him put that pressure on, you know, re remind us uh, about that power and, and yeah. what he can do. And so hopefully he gets this guy out early, dude. I hope he knocks him out and, uh, you know, bigger, better things. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So don't miss John Scrappy Ramirez mm -hmm. versus Fernando Diaz. And the main event on that card, guys, we have Alexis Rocha, 22-1 and one with 14 knockouts. He will take on Anthony Young, who is 24-2 with eight KOs. Bad Chaz, uh, Alexis Rocha, uh, his promoter, Golden Boy, is keeping him busy Yeah, uh, here in the welterweight division. Um, 
How do you see this fight playing out, man? Oh, you know, I think Alexis is going to come in there. He's the southpaw. He's got power in his hands. I think that, you know, the opponent that he's facing young, you know what I mean? I think that he's going to be, you know, a little athletic and, and, you know, kind of be able to dance around him and try to avoid him for the most part, you know, and try to set up some simple punches with him. But I think that Rochus is going to take it to him over time and just kind of yeah. set up some body shots and just kind of slow his opponent down and, you know, come out yeah, unanimous or or hopefully he gets the knockout. Right. That'd be, the you know, yeah. the the best thing, right, to get that knockout, mm-hmm. keep that interest going in Rocha. Because yeah. uh, for a while there, never, you're real they were planning to have Rocha maybe fight a Crawford. Yeah. Um, what does a win over Young do for Rocha? You know what? Yeah, it puts him in, you know, that hat again. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, with those 147 pounders, dude. Yeah. Um, shoot, maybe even a matchup with Virgil after this. That's right. You know, yeah. if, if Virgil, you know, gets back in there and beats uh, yeah. Stalionis, you know what I mean? Right. It, it yeah. could be possible. But I like Alexis Rocha, dude. He's yeah. a workhorse, dude. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He he goes out there. He puts on an entertaining fight. And I think that's what he's going to do with Young. And uh, I think he beats him. Yeah, and keeping busy is always a good thing, right? For yeah. the for you know for the boxers out there. But yeah, don't do not miss the main event: Alexis Rocha versus Anthony Young. All right, guys. Now let's talk about the current events in boxing. All right, guys. Well, we got the news that Ryan Garcia has picked his new trainer, and it's none other than 2022 Trainer of the Year. Derek James. Mm-hmm. Uh, great news, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, Bad Chaz, wh- when you heard that news, what would you think, man? Oh, you know what? I, I was excited to see that. You know, it's it's different. I think that, you know, he needed to make an adjustment with his coach. But I don't want it to be uh, the coach's problem. You know what I mean? I don't want him to right. be like, hey, the reason I went over here is because of my coach's problem. I want I want Ryan Garcia to kind of blossom and bloom, you know what I mean, And in that division and in boxing. So I hope that he can become responsible, you know what I mean? And, and just kind of tighten up on some things that, you know, maybe um, that he needs to tighten up on because he's a part of a, that's a great camp. Mm-hmm. And I don't think he's going to have any excuses if, if he's with them and he takes another fight, you know what I mean? And we see s- some sign of weakness or, or something that, you know, maybe defensively responsible, he, you know, he doesn't have to offer. I think that it's not going to be Derek James's problem, you know, no, I, really? I think, or, um, so I'd like to see him kind of, um, do better, you know, uh, with this coach, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yeah. Uh, I hope that, you know, he can be receptive to what they're teaching him over there because, I mean, that's a great opportunity, man. And, yeah. and uh, not too many people are going to have open doors for you, you know, whenever you, you want to come uh, train with them and work out with them. And for those guys to open the door for him, that right. was just incredible. That's you know what huge. I mean? And, and um, I'm excited to see what's next for him. And um, I hope that, you know, he's more aggressive in the ring, but he's more defensively responsible in the ring. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I'm I'm happy to hear that news yeah. because, you know, Derek James to me seems like someone you don't, you know, you don't mess around. He yeah, He's exactly. the captain of the ship. He's going to tell you how it is and and you're going to follow his instructions, right? Yeah. Uh, what do you think of that, of this of this new pairing, man? You know what? There's two camps that I, that I was thinking of, you know, and it was Derek James and it was RGBA. And those two camps, man, they'll break you down to build you back up. You know what I mean? I think that's what they're going to do at, you know, with Derek James is he's going to break you down, dude. He's going to break you down mentally. He's going to break you down physically. And he, then he's going to build you back up. And uh, Ryan needed that. You know, he he needs that. He needs to go in there with some dogs, dude, and some great sparring, just the best in the world. You know yeah. what I mean? Because Ryan's a, a, a great fighter, dude. He's a he's a one in a. Um, a million, you know, fighters, right, you know potential. what I mean? He has that potential, dude. And uh, I just feel like this camp, dude, they're going to break him down, but then they're going to build him back up to be even better, dude. And uh, I can't wait to see what he does. And, and uh, I, man, that was a great decision, man. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So there you go. The pairing between Ryan Garcia and Derek James. Hope it works out, guys. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. In other news, I know if you've heard this uh, a <laughs> thousand and one yeah. times, but... Uh, Spence and Crawford are reportedly uh, gonna fight on July 29th. Um, yeah, you know we've reported before, but you know all these negotiations have always fall, fallen through. And uh, I, and I say this, you know, like you know, I know we remember saying like, oh, we're, we're not, not gonna, gonna talk, talk about, about it, it until <laughs> you know we see them at the press conference or in the yeah. ring even. So, but uh, what are your early thoughts of them? Hopefully, luckily. Finally getting it on July 29th. Oh, Chaz. man, it's just kind of hard to, to hear that again. Like, <laughs> right. you know, because you get, it, gets your, it gets your ball rolling, you right. know, like I don't want to anticipate this. But like you said, like it's just uh, like, well, where are the tickets at? I want to see the tickets for sale, you know, to make <laughs> mm-hmm. this uh, more confirmed. But 
man, that's exciting. I hope that, uh, I hope that they got the right ref and the right commission for that <laughs> fight because I don't want it. I don't, I would like to enjoy it. I want the fans mm-hmm. to enjoy it, you know, like, right. We don't want no Tony weeks and we don't want those judges mm-mm. that judged, uh, Lomachenko no. Haney, right. Or, or Ryan tank. <laughs> yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, um, I think that it's exciting, man. Um, I think that, um, it's going to be very technical, high IQ and, uh, I think that, you know, Earl Spence, man, he's just a great fighter. I just I just have nothing but love for him, man. Coming back yeah. after that car accident to mm-hmm. put on performances like he does, yeah. you know. I mean, a little ring rust in there, you know what I mean? Maybe these guys should get a little, I don't know. They, they kind of made it pretty quick, you know. Like, there was no uh, tune-up, you know what I mean? They just kind of went straight to it. So, it's going to be interesting to see kind of how it plays out. Yeah, and uh, Errol Spence, uh, if you would have asked me two years ago, who's your favorite fighter? I was at Errol Spence all day. Uh, but like you mentioned, he's been uh, inactive. Mm-hmm. His last fight was against Ugas, which is over a year ago. Uh, so I'm thinking, man, that's that's got to hurt him coming coming into the biggest fight of his career yeah. against Crawford, who's undoubtedly top three pound for pound. Um, will that inactivity from Spence hurt uh, him going into that Crawford fight? Yeah, that's a very I mean, good I, question, I, dude. It's it's hard to say, but. I mean, you're fighting the best in the world, right. dude. Like, That's I had Crawford, like, at number one in my pound for pound for a long time, dude. He's the best, dude. And uh, <laughs> But Spence is that good, too, dude. And it's just hard to say, man. Just a lot of, like, what ifs or questions or who knows who has, who has injuries coming into the fight. or It's just a crazy fight to call, dude. And yeah. this is one of the fights that I've been looking forward to, like, for a while. And... Man, we've had a blessed year of boxing already, dude. And yeah, for, sure. for this to top it off is just amazing, yeah. dude. Mm-hmm. So I hope the fight happens. <laughs> and again, like uh, I got to dig more into like what they're doing into their camps right, to, right. to pick a winner. But I love both fighters. And thank you for finally making this happen because, man, like you're making the fans just excited as yeah. hell, man. Yeah. 100% guys. So we look forward to Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford. Finally, hopefully July 29th. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that concludes our podcast. Any shout outs we want to make? Neighborhood Hero Ryan Reels. Ah, just to all the matchmakers, like I said, man, it's been a great year of boxing, dude. Just every weekend, man, like have the family over, mm-hmm. just enjoying boxing, man. Like, you know, I even forgot about my Giants and I forgot about <laughs> my Lakers, you know, right. getting swept. Yeah, and, they got swept. You man. know what I mean? It's just been a great year, dude. And uh, thank you, matchmakers. Thank you, promoters. Thank you, everybody who's putting on these great shows, man. Yeah. Well said, Neighborhood Hero Ryan Reels. Uh, any shout outs, Bad Chaz? Oh, you know what? Just our fans, man, our subscribers. Subscribers, you know, the people, you know, coming to join the show and watching the show and just dropping comments, you know what I mean? Kind of reinforcing what we're doing and stuff. And, you know, you guys, you know, for showing up here and, uh, you know, helping us put out great content, you know, consistently. There's not a lot of people, you know, showing and giving credit to, you know, some of these amateur fighters or these uh, prospects coming up professionally. And I think that we're doing something good here and uh, just huge respect to everyone, man. Thank you. It's it's been a good ride, man. 100 percent. I do want to uh, make a shout out to uh, my firstborn daughter, Megan Alyssa. She graduated uh, from the University of Long Beach. Congratulations, baby. You did it. Great accomplishment. Congrats. Congrats. Mm-hmm. We got to have sushi. Right? You're right. We have sushi soon. Yeah. <laughs> she loves that stuff. Uh, I also want to say a shout out to uh, Carlo Dowling of the uh, Bakersfield CHP. I was uh, I had the opportunity to work his corner yes, at the Battle of the Badges in Bakersfield this past Friday, man. Great experience, man. It was awesome, man. Uh, also, shout out to your stable mates. Uh, everybody in the, you know, at the backstage where they were warming up, they were all cool, man. Uh, I had a blast meeting them all. And uh, and I commend everyone that participated in that Battle of the Badges. Uh, you guys did great. And uh, the city of Bakersfield as well. They put on a great show. It was, it was everything was nicely put together. And uh, we'll hope to be there again next year, man. So uh, thank you, guys. And last but not least, Sound Guy Rob. Cameraman Liam, thank you guys for helping us each and every week. And with that said, guys, I am Coach D, along with Bad Chaz and Neighborhood Hero Ryan Reels, and we're out, guys.